Happy New Year! We are back with another monthly wrap-up of some of the weird, bizarre, and even scary news to come out of Japan over the last month. So, what happened over the last month or so? Let's take a look! Number 1. As you may remember, in March 2022, the Killing Stone in Tochigi Prefecture finally split in half, leading to many people claiming that the spirit of the Kitsune, who was said to reside in it, having escaped. Well, on December 7th, the carcasses of eight wild boars were discovered near the stone. At 10.20 that morning, an employee from the nearby national park discovered the bodies to the rear right of the stone. It's believed the toxic gases that gave rise to the legend in the first place are to blame. Now, it's not uncommon to find deceased animals near the stone thanks to all the toxic gases, but what made this particularly terrifying is that it rarely ever happens in such large numbers. Some claimed that this was once again the work of the kitsune, but either way, the bodies were removed and officials reminded people there's no danger as long as you don't get too close to the stone and stay behind the ropes. Always good advice to heed. Number 2. A tweet made on December 5th about a particular spot on Google Maps gained a lot of attention last month. Looks like it's going to be crowded, it said. I don't think you need to rush to death like that. The picture they had captured from Google Maps was labelled as the Sansu River, the fabled river that sits between the worlds of the living and the dead. But how could that exist on Google Maps, and where exactly was it located? Of course, people are able to submit any site or location of interest to Google that they want, and many fake ones, such as this, get through. What made this interesting was that it stated the area was rather crowded late at night, meaning that crowds of ghosts were rushing to get to the other side. Why the rush? You're already dead. The actual location in question made it even more interesting, as the spot in question was actually one of the relay points for Mount Osore, one of Japan's three most sacred mountains, and a spot considered by many to connect to the other side. In particular, it referred to the Taiko Bridge, a bridge that is actually closed while funding is raised to replace the wooden structure with a sturdier stone one. Guess it's not closed to ghosts, huh? Number 3. You may remember the bike gang joyriders from last month who broke several traffic laws while celebrating a birthday. Well, this month, it was reported another gang of five 16 to 18 year olds were again arrested for recklessly riding their motorbikes, this time swerving wildly through traffic. Police stated the five youths had been friends since junior high, but perhaps more worryingly, it seemed that bike gangs, which were mostly in their peak during the 70s and 80s, and in recent times have been dying out, seemed to be on the rise again, with numerous new gangs trying to revive the old biker gang culture. Only time will tell whether they're successful or not. Number 4. On December 8th, it was reported that in April this year, an elementary school bus driver in Sado City, Niigata Prefecture, accidentally forgot to drop a student off. The child, in the lower grades of elementary school, got on the bus at 1.30 and was supposed to be dropped off roughly 20 minutes later. However, the driver thought the child was using the school daycare service and drove right past the stop, unaware the child was on board, and returned to the school at 2pm. The school soon received a call from the child's parents informing them that they hadn't come home yet, and upon searching the bus, they found the child asleep in the second last row of seats. What upset people, however, was that this news was kept secret and the public wasn't informed until September, almost half a year later. The city claimed it was because they were fully investigating how such an event could occur and promised to make changes, including a list of children who were using the bus that was to be checked off each and every time. Number 5. On December 4th, a Twitter user posted a picture of an arts and crafts project their daughter in the third grade made. A vending machine, made of cardboard. What caught people's attention, however, was the amount of detail put into it. It came with six different types of drinks, slots for cards, cash and change, and an opening mouth to pull drinks out of. After gaining traction online, it was then upgraded with a trash can and new payment options, a money tray, and even coffee and beer. Lights were even installed, 
as well as a voice saying pay pay when the pay pay option was used. Impressive for a child only in the third grade. And the art project was so popular that it even featured on the news. Nice. Number six. Social media is serious business. And last month, it was reported that a rather interesting spat between junior high students almost got deadly. It all started when a 14-year-old boy sent out a tweet saying, I'm the most famous Yankee in Saitama. Of course, the Yankee they're referring to here isn't the American type, but rather the young Japanese delinquent type that likes to run around in gangs getting into fights and dressing up somewhat extravagantly. But it seemed a 15-year-old Saitama girl took exception to this tweet and replied, I'm more famous than you. And those, of course, were fighting words. The pair decided to take it to the streets, bringing their respective gangs to see who really was the best, most famous Saitama Yankee of all. Unfortunately for the boy, the girl was acquaintances with a Yakuza member of the Sumiyoshi Kai, and she brought him and a crew of 28 others to abduct the boy and physically assault him over several locations and hours. His injuries were so bad that doctors say he'll take roughly three months to recover from them. The girl and 11 others have thus been arrested. All over a single tweet. Number seven. Have you ever eaten some candy and thought to yourself, man, I wish this was tasteless? Well, now you can eat the tasteless candy of your dreams, thanks to Lawson. They've released a brand of sweets called Tasteless Candy. Perhaps emphasis on the question mark in the middle. The candy was initially trialled during October and November and became a hot topic on the internet, leading to the company deciding to release it outside the trial period as well. Now, according to those who've tried it, the candy isn't exactly tasteless. It has an incredibly subtle taste, perhaps akin to a watered-down sports drink. But for many, it seems to hit the spot. And who doesn't want to at least try the novelty of something marketing itself as without flavour? The creators were apparently initially scared that people would hate it, and thus were incredibly surprised when it took off so well. If you're heading to Lawson anytime soon, keep an eye out. Number 8. Do you like dipping your fries in your milkshake? I can't say I've ever tried it myself, although the idea does intrigue me. Well, on November 29th, Japanese fast food chain Mos Burger posted a rather interesting tweet. It seems they want you to dip your Moss chicken into your Moss shake. Because why not? Naturally, replies were somewhat suspicious of this combination. Why would you want to put your greasy, hot fried chicken into your smooth, cold vanilla shake? Are they truly a supreme match, as the public Twitter would have you believe? Well, that's up for you to decide, but Japan is certainly no stranger to mixing strange foods together, and I'll certainly never get over that beef stew ice cream I once tasted there. Never again. Number 9. Police in Japan have had to deal with several strange incidents recently, with a man reportedly riding his motorbike into the lobby of a Fukuoka police station on November 28th and revving it loudly so that he could complain about bad drivers. Yes, perhaps the irony was a little lost on him and he was promptly arrested. On the very same day, Police in Saitama announced they had arrested a 67-year-old man for making a whopping 2,060 phone calls to their station over a week-long period at the beginning of October. Phone records revealed the man had actually been making these nuisance calls for years, although his particular grudge against the police remains unknown. The most recent stint logged 27 hours straight of abuse, with the man calling them idiots, tax thieves, and threatening to have them fired, amongst other abuse. Police are still investigating the reason for his persistent abuse and tying up public resources. Number 10. And finally this month, I think something pretty much all of us can relate to. On December 18th, Nick K newspaper published an article talking about how more and more young people are choosing properties without baths. 
They painted this as young people purposefully deciding to keep the rent down and enjoying the social aspects of going to public baths. Of course, not everyone agreed with painting such a rosy picture of people living without what many would consider a basic need. It's amazing how they put a positive spin on the number of poor people are increasing, posted one person on Twitter in a tweet that rapidly gained attention. I wonder if they're going to start writing soon about the number of young people choosing houses without toilets is increasing, or comfortable living without air conditioning, or maybe taking a look at the natural food boom and foraging for edible weeds. Criticism of the article has been harsh, but it did lead to many people coming up with their own ridiculous articles, like how to go without three meals a day for a great diet, or catch your own bugs for dinner and slim down instantly. Tasty. Number 1. On January 31st, an interesting tweet started doing the rounds because of, well, how scary it was when you really stopped to think about it. Posting on behalf of a friend talking about her own sister, the image said, My younger sister set her phone wallpaper to a stock photo of some random family. How scary. Apparently she did it so that when things get tough she can do her best for her family. That's even more frightening. As you can see, the photo is indeed of a random family from a stock website, and, as always, the comments section is a ride in and of itself. People turned the strange situation into songs, compared it to the movie Parasite. Some found it cute, while others were horrified. The original tweeter shared another picture of her friend's sister as well, covered in maple syrup and claimed she was the most interesting person she's ever met, but also one of the cutest too. Indeed. Number 2. The town of Oki in Fukuoka Prefecture is famous for being one of the largest producers of mushrooms in the country, and last year three adorable mushroom statues were installed around town to celebrate. Because why not? But on December 18th, a visitor who went to look at the statues noticed that two were missing. Apparently one had been missing since July last year, and now it seemed another had disappeared as well. Well, one of those creepy yet adorable little guys was found on December 27th in a nearby river. This guy, named Puriketsu-san, which means, officially, Mr. Badunkadunk, I don't make the rules, that's what the dictionary says, was named clearly for his, well, Badunkadunk. But sadly, that Badunkadunk was missing when the statue was recovered and a town official stated they're not quite sure what to do with him anymore but they'd still like to put him on display somewhere. F's in the chat for the loss of a great badunkadunk. Number 3. News started doing the rounds early in January of a tweet that was posted in October last year. In it, you can see what appears to be a giant can of fruit that was apparently sitting on an empty lot next to a school in Yamanashi Prefecture. What was it? Why was it there? Was there a giant yokai lurking nearby leaving giant empty cans of trash? The answer turned out to be surprisingly simple. The empty lot the can sat on belonged to a former sign maker, and when contacted, the daughter of the company founder claimed that the can was made roughly 30 years ago to display at a trade fair. After the fair ended, it was placed on the store premises and there it remained for several decades, and that's where it still sits even today. There are plans to dismantle it at some point, but until then, if you walk by that lot today, you can still sneak a peek at some interesting local history. Number 4. You no doubt know by this point I love stories of Yankees and delinquent culture in Japan, and this month I have yet another piece for you. On January 7th, a Twitter user posted a photo of their vacuum robot that they'd made some adjustments to. And what adjustments were those exactly? Well, in their own words, they turned it into a Yankee. They upgraded their robot in the best possible way so that whenever it bumped into something, it would spout classic lines like it came just out of a manga. Which junior high are you from, huh? Don't mess with me. And so on. Not gonna lie, if they started producing these for sale, I'd be one of the first in line. 
my robot sadly just gets stuck on things and spins in circles instead of challenging me to duels. A pity. Number 5. On January 7th, a Twitter user posted some photos of a vending machine. No, this one wasn't made of cardboard, nor was it selling anything especially strange. What made this interesting wasn't what the vending machine was selling, but rather, what it was hiding. The door to the yakitori place I always visited was blocked by a vending machine about a year ago, so I thought it closed down thanks to Corona. But yesterday, I discovered that it actually opens into the store. How the hell was I supposed to know that? It turned out that the user thought his favourite store was closed for an entire year, before passing by one day and then, suddenly, the vending machine opened and a customer walked out. The vending machine actually works, yes, but it also now doubles as the door to the shop. It was specially made because the shop owner thought it would be interesting, and it cost about 800,000 yen to install. But, as was evident with the Twitter user, over the course of the year many people didn't realise it was a door, and numerous deliveries even found their way to the pub next door instead. Whoops. Either way, they managed to survive both Corona and people mistaking the door as nothing but a vending machine, so well done. Number 6. I'm all about weird capsule toys, and this month we have another. Titled Macho Chess. It does exactly what it says on the box. If you've ever played a game of chess and thought to yourself, you know what, this game isn't macho enough, then fear no more. Each of the chess pieces were modelled after a particular bodybuilding pose, with the king being a lat spread, the queen being the side chest, and so on. In order to create such a superior chess set, actual photos were taken of bodybuilders in the set poses, and these photos were then sent to the prototype makers who crafted the designs. These were corrected and updated until deemed perfect, and the entire process took two years to make. Truly, we live in a glorious era. Macho Chess is available now. Number 7. An article published by an Italian website made waves in Japan last month because of its interesting choice of picture. The article, posted by La Repubblica, spoke about Ancient Rome was a city of immigrants, as confirmed by DNA analysis. But this wasn't what caught people's attention. It was the image attached to it. Yes, Japanese readers were delighted that, for whatever reason, they used an image of Abe Hiroshi from the live-action film of The Maya no Maya, originally a manga about a Roman architect who found himself occasionally in modern-day Japanese baths and hot springs, where he was then inspired and took those innovations back to ancient Rome. Abe Hiroshi, a man who freely flies through space and time, wrote one commenter, and more shared pictures proving that Abe is indeed a man of many errors and continents. Number 8. Always on the cutting edge of innovations, last month a new type of shirt went on sale for the work-at-home businessman who still wants to dress appropriately for Zoom meetings, but also wants to feel comfortable in his home. Yes, you can now buy the fake Y shirt for less than 2,000 yen and fool everybody who doesn't know any better. Worn under a jacket, it looks like a perfectly normal business shirt, but once the jacket comes off, well, it can also function as a bib, I guess. It comes in white or blue in various sizes, and claims to be easy to wash and iron because, well, it has no sleeves. If you happen to get hot easily, then this is the perfect shirt for your work from home needs. I mean, indeed. These shirts are available for your work from home pleasure right now. Number 9. The month wouldn't be complete without some toilet news. So, on the morning of January 29th, a 30 year old man from Hokkaido was arrested for spending the night in a toilet. The unemployed man of no fixed address apparently broke into a supermarket in Asahikawa City with the intention of simply spending the night there, which he did. But when cleaning staff arrived in the morning, they noticed the toilet was locked and called police. When police questioned the man, he admitted to breaking into the store to spend the night in the toilet, but 
that was all he did. There has been no news on whether he'll be arrested for his little toilet stint thus far. Number 10. Finally this month, have you ever wanted to buy your own curse? Well, now you can. The topic started trending on Twitter early in January, and people realised that if you visit the Makari website and search for curses, well, you can find quite a few. Some go for as little as a few thousand yen, others go for hundreds of thousands of yen. Do they work? Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out. You can buy simple things such as charms, amulets, and even straw dolls. Or you can buy a curse and inform the seller of who they should cast it on. Then they'll do the rest. Or if you're afraid that someone will curse you first, well, you can buy a spell that'll send it right back on the caster. Early bird gets the worm or something. If you can buy a fancy bib to wear as a work shirt from home, then I don't see why you can't buy a curse as well. It is the internet after all. Number 1. You may remember from a few months back when I spoke about a strange giant ball that washed up on a Japanese beach. Well, this month we got yet another one. On February 21st, NHK reported that a large ball washed up on a beach in Hamamatsu City, Shizuoka Prefecture. The ball was roughly one and a half meters long and apparently made of metal. What on earth was it? Initial testing determined it was an explosive, at the very least, and a quick delve into the comments section brought up all sorts of interesting theories. Aliens. Saiyans from Dragon Ball. Wrecking Balls. You name it, someone probably shared a photo of it. Further tests were then carried out, and officials claimed it was likely just a foreign research buoy that somehow washed up on Japanese shores, but they've been unable to determine who owns it. If they don't claim it soon, however, the ball will be destroyed. Number 2. I'm all about the crazy things you can get from gacha machines, as I'm sure you know, but this month has gone and given us something special. Now you can wear the gacha machine right on your back. Yes, you heard right. You can wear a gacha machine as a backpack. And who hasn't wanted to do that? Let's be real. Called the Showy Gacha, you can buy this rather pricey bag for just 9,900 yen, or roughly $100. You can store capsules in it for display, but while it has a knob, it's sadly just for display and doesn't actually work. You can put a capsule in the spot where they would come out, however, if you want to pretend that it does. It otherwise functions as a perfectly normal, if large and unwieldy, backpack. These fashion stoppers are on sale now. Number 3. On February 16th, a tweet started doing the rounds of a rather interesting ad someone came across on the train. I wonder if it's really okay to target this ad at 15 to 18 year olds, the tweet said. The poster features several high school girls running around happily, but it's the text that makes the whole thing rather, well, weird. High school only lasts three years. Even if it's just for one second, I want to look as cute as I can for as long as I can. The ad was for double eyelid plastic surgery, which in and of itself isn't that strange, but the fact it was being targeted specifically at high school girls rubbed some people the wrong way. Some thought it was no big deal, while others pointed out that simply having eyelid surgery wouldn't make you beautiful if you were already ugly to begin with. Ouch. Still, certainly a risky play by the company, and it has made at least some question their methods. Number 4. Osaka has an incredibly special place in my heart, and this month they've given us some rather interesting and perhaps bumbling news. On January 11th, a 20-year-old man from Osaka City reportedly went on a little crime spree where he robbed four different convenience stores in 20 minutes. Considering that big cities tend to have convenience stores on every corner, this itself isn't that hard to believe. But what made it interesting was that during this spree, he reportedly stopped at yet another convenience store, not to rob it, but rather to pay his phone bill. With the money he had stolen from a previous store. 
because he might be on a crime spree, but having a working phone is still important. Of course, this was his downfall, as police were able to use security camera footage to track his spree, and then use his phone bill to determine who he was. He admitted to the crimes once arrested and said he did it because he was, perhaps unsurprisingly, having money problems. Number 5. I'm not even sure how to approach this next one. It was reported last month that on December 15th last year, a teenage girl went to grab her bicycle at 7.30am from where it was parked near a train station in Soma City, Fukushima Prefecture. However, when she got there, she noticed something on the seat. It appeared to be, well, human excrement. As any sane person would do, she immediately called the police, and they were able to determine a 28-year-old man who lived nearby was the culprit. He apparently carried out the deed the night before, carrying out the act right on top of her seat, rather than doing it elsewhere first and then simply placing it on top. Why on earth would he commit such a disgusting act? The man admitted he did so because he liked her. I don't even know what to say other than, ew. Number 6. For something somehow a little less cursed, it was revealed last month that Nika-chan, that doll you may know from various urban legends, is doing a collaboration with, of all things, Super Mario. This doll, called Super Mario Daisuke Nika-chan, will sell for a cool 5,280 yen this March and she comes with Mario's familiar overalls and hat, as well as a Mario stage background and even a handbag fashioned after a question mark block. And to honour her beloved Super Mario, Nika-chan even comes like she's doing Mario's famous jumping pose in the box. Nice. And probably not cursed this time. Probably. Number 7. Over the months, we've reported on various things people have stolen for a variety of trifling reasons, such as a single stamp or rice ball. And this month, we have yet another odd one. New Year's cards are a rather big tradition in Japan, and it's not uncommon to send one to pretty much every single person you know. You might even get some from people you don't even remember, and it's an incredibly busy time of year for the postal service. Well, on January 14th, a 38-year-old man from Hyogo Prefecture was arrested for stealing, well, over 1,000 New Year's cards from people's mailboxes. He admitted to the charges and claimed he did so only because he was lonely, and reading the messages on them helped distract him. People initially sympathised with the man, but then it turned out he may have actually had a different motive. You see, New Year's cards sent through the post come with a serial number, much like a lottery number, that you can use to redeem prizes if you get a match. This is just one of the reasons so many people send the cards, and when the man was arrested, it turned out he had at least a few gifts redeemed from this service. Did he get them from the cards he stole? Making matters even more confusing, he was later seen returning many of the cards he stole back in people's letterboxes, suggesting he did indeed feel bad about what he did or, at the very least, felt guilty about getting busted. Whoops. Number 8. Look, I'm not one to judge people buying body pillows. After all, I own one myself. But this one set for release this month is certainly interesting. Rather than being a regular old body pillow, this one is a hizamakura, meaning it bends at the hip so you can put your head on the character's legs like you're in an anime, looking up at the lady of your dreams or something, I guess. But if that's still not enough, you can also download an ASMR bundle that you can listen to while you rest your head on this cushion lady's legs. And what exactly will you be listening to? The sound of her cleaning your ears, of course. Because why not? The various sounds included actually come from the voice actress herself for ultimate authenticity as well. If you want a cushion to 
whisper sweet nothings into your ear as it pretends to clean it, you can snap this bad boy up for just 11,000 yen. A bargain. Number 9. Visual presentation is important, particularly if you are selling, you know, visuals. On February 24th, someone who bought an idol's photo book shared an interesting and perhaps disappointing photo of one of the shots inside. The guy who designed this idol's photo book doesn't have a lick of sense for book design. You should quit right now. I mean, it's hard to argue with him when you see the result. This led to others sharing their photos of similar mishaps, from ads to manga and everything in between. How the photo made it through the entire design process like this and nobody questioned whether this was, perhaps, a bad idea or not, remains unknown. But, as they say, any publicity is good publicity, right? Number 10. Haunted houses are still rather popular attractions in Japan and you can generally find quite a few of them in any big city you visit. But while they are fun and scary, it's always good to remember that the people working in them are, well, human, not ghosts. It was reported last month that an employee working at the scariest haunted house around, in Toei's Eigamura Park, filed a case against Toei Kyoto Studios for breaching their duty of care and safety. Why? Well, this one goes all the way back to 2011. Reportedly, the employee was working in the haunted house on September 10th, 2011, when a tipsy man, who just happened to be a fifth dan in karate, was frightened by an employee doing his job as a ghost in the attraction. The man used his karate skills to kick the performer in the jaw so hard that it broke. The employee filed charges against the man, who ended up paying for his medical treatment, as well as a settlement of 10 million yen. But getting a broken jaw on the job is certainly no laughing matter. And now the man is suing the company as well, for not doing enough to prevent the incident from even happening. He claims there should have been more space between the performers and the public, as well as a partition, as there's no telling how someone might react when they get scared, as evidenced by his broken jaw. This case is still ongoing. Number 1. Have you ever wanted to marry your favourite fictional character? Well, never fear, Japan has you covered. A website known as the Dimensional Bureau will now issue marriage certificates for you and your favourite character. It began when the website's creator, a former designer, realised he was in love with a character from the anime Symphogear. He feared others wouldn't understand his feelings, but after searching on the internet, realised he wasn't alone in being a fictosexual. As such, he decided to start the website to help out others like himself reach their dreams. By marrying fictional characters. The service actually started in November 2020, and has reportedly issued over 200 marriage certificates since it began, and he receives requests not only from Japan, but from overseas as well. Of course, you can't actually marry a fictional character, and there are of course copyrights involved. But the certificates are more of a symbolic thing to show your love for your favourite character. And so, if there's a fictional character you have your eyes on, you can visit the website and snag them for yourself. Or something. Number 2. In a rather interesting piece of news this month, it was reported that on March 7th, around 4.30pm, a woman in Nabari City, Mie Prefecture, was suddenly attacked by a middle-aged man wearing a grey jacket and cargo pants. But what he said to the woman was what made this attack truly strange and confusing. I'm looking for a family who will take me in, he said before fleeing. As of now, the police are still looking for the man, and the incident reportedly took place near Suzurandai Elementary School. They are looking for anyone who might have any information about the man, but other than her confusion and being quite frightened, the woman was otherwise unharmed. Number 3. It's gacha time again. The stranger, the better, right? Well, this month you can buy quite the interesting capsule toy. This one is known as the gacha pond that absolutely will never open. Sounds like a challenge. 
This toy comes with varying levels of difficulty. Level 1 is simply two halves stuck together. Level 2 increases the number of layers, and level 3 takes it to an almost lament configuration number of twists, turns, and pieces. Can you summon yourself some Cenobites if you open it? Only one way to find out. Of course, these can actually be opened, and it's become a bit of a trend on the Japanese internet to film yourself doing so, but there's nothing inside them. The joy was the fun you had along the way. Number 4. On March 5th, a laundromat owner noticed something strange taking place inside his store. A young man, who didn't appear to have any washing, stood before a dryer while looking around suspiciously. After seemingly confirming that no one was there, he started rifling around inside it. This particular dryer was full of a woman's underwear. The 60-year-old owner approached the man and asked him what he was doing, only for the man to respond, This is none of your concern. I'm not stealing anything. Of course, if the first thing you say is, I'm not stealing anything, then suspicions are going to be raised. And when the owner said he was going to call the police, the situation escalated. The man tried to bribe the owner with money and begged him not to call the police, but he refused. He tried to keep the man from fleeing, even standing in front of his car, but the man took off, the owner clinging to the front of his car as he did. He then reversed, sending the owner tumbling to the ground, but unfortunately for him, all of this was recorded on numerous security cameras, so he was swiftly arrested and he admitted to the charges. The owner, meanwhile, has been praised for his courage in stepping in and trying to stop the man from stealing someone's underwear. Number 5. It seemed there was a spat of underwear stealing this month, as it was reported on March 11th that a 24-year-old man, a nurse in Kudume City, Fukuoka Prefecture, was arrested on suspicion of breaking and entering last December and January. Why was he breaking and entering? To steal underwear, of course. What made this story even stranger was that the house the man broke into was that of his girlfriend's friend. His break-ins were discovered when his girlfriend saw pictures on his phone of her friend's house and underwear. Confused and a little horrified, she went to the police. He admitted to the charges and said he did so because he was curious and wanted to satisfy his desires. Needless to say, the couple aren't dating anymore, but it's unknown how the friend feels about having her delicates stolen by a friend's boyfriend. Number 6. A tweet by the Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare went viral last month for, well, its use of an adorable cat. The tweet was made to bring attention to a parasite known as anisakis that can be found in fish and cause people to have allergic reactions. Vinegar, salt pickles, soy sauce and wasabi will not kill it, the tweet says warning people to be very careful when preparing sashimi, but freezing and heating are effective against it. Of course, it was the adorable cat playing with a toy fish that helped the tweet gain traction, as it can be seen lounging and playing with a toy fish that's, hopefully, parasite-free. Neither a cat's punches nor kicks can destroy anisakis, states a funny little note on the picture as well. This got all sorts of eyes on the tweet, a smart move by the ministry, and when asked who the cat was, they revealed it belonged to one of their employees. All in a day's work. Number 7. Something that always fascinated me during my time in Japan was the… well, I'm not even sure what it's called. Basically, a restraining pole that most government buildings such as schools have on hand to keep trespassers safely at bay while the police are called. They're long poles with a usually pointy pronged end so you can keep someone safely pinned against a wall so they can't hurt anyone until help arrives. Well this month, a security company released a new series of these poles, going by rather badass names such as Cerberus and Orochi, that can be used to instantly restrain and down an intruder before they even know what's going on. These can even be used to wrestle weapons from the intruder and then down them immediately after, leaving them nice and tied up until police arrive. Efficient and safe. These products are only available to officially licensed organizations, however, so if you want one for your home, you're out of luck. 
Number eight. Late last year, a 70-year-old unemployed man went out to the front of his apartment building like he usually did to grab a free newspaper. One of the other residents was a delivery man, and he let the 70-year-old take a free copy if any were left because he knew about how hard up he was for money. But on this particular day, his wallet was also in the usual basket and, unable to stop himself, the 70-year-old stole 70,000 yen from it, even though he knew there were security cameras watching his every move. According to the man himself, he just wanted to have a little fun. Having no money for so long is rough, and when he saw the money, he couldn't stop himself. He spent the money quite quickly, and amongst the things he bought was some yakiniku from a nearby restaurant. When he was asked about this in court, however, he had an interesting response. Most defendants try to make themselves appear as apologetic as possible, but when he was asked how the yakiniku that he bought with the stolen money tasted, he answered truthfully. Honestly, it was incredibly delicious. Indeed. Ultimately, the man received a one-year prison sentence for his crime, suspended for three years. Number nine. Be careful what you eat at school. On March 1st, six students and five staff members at Kanare Junior High School in Nagoya ate yogurt prepared by a 72-year-old teacher. They only had a few tablespoons each, enough to taste test it, but just a few short hours later, many began to experience intense stomach pains, vomiting, and nausea. They were rushed to the hospital and it was discovered they were suffering from food poisoning. Yes, the yogurt was to blame. The teacher reportedly wanted to convey the importance of good bacteria to the students, the type that can be found in yogurt, and he made this yogurt himself by mixing milk with a starter culture set that he left at home to ferment for a week before taking it to school. Sadly, something went wrong in the process, but everyone who consumed the yogurt quickly recovered and the school is investigating what went wrong. A message about bacteria was sent, but perhaps not the one they were after. Number 10. Finally this month, a 39-year-old man of no fixed address in Nakamura Ward, Nagoya, was arrested for, well, beating up two police officers. The man reportedly visited their police box in Nakamura Ward around 4.30pm on March 2nd, and then demanded that they lend him a gun. Naturally, the officers refused, and this upset the man so much that he then attacked them. Both officers ultimately escaped with only slight wounds, and they were able to keep their guns from him long enough to arrest him. The suspect, of course, admitted to the charges. It would be a little hard to wiggle out of that one. As of yet, no motive has been given as to why he even wanted a gun in the first place, nor why he thought the officers would hand him one. Number 1. It was reported this month that around 11am on April 11th, a 41-year-old employee at Konami went to work and decided today was the day he was going to settle a grudge. He picked up a fire extinguisher, walked over to the desk of his 48-year-old former manager, a man he hadn't actually worked with for almost three years, and then hit him in the back of the head with it. Ow. Of course, fellow employees quickly subdued the man and he was promptly arrested for attempted murder. He admitted during questioning that his motives were indeed murderous, and despite the fact they hadn't directly worked together for several years, he still harboured a grudge over his former manager harassing him at work. In his mind, the harassment was so bad that he was unable to continue living if the manager was alive as well. The manager is currently in a stable condition and Konami promptly fired the attempted murderer. Number 2. On April 10th, shortly before midday, an elderly driver was pulled over in Shiso City in Hyogo Prefecture because an officer noticed he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Now, at a glance, this seemed like a fairly regular traffic stop, but when the officer asked the 82-year-old man if he could see his license, he got a rather surprising answer. My license was revoked when I was around 20, so I don't have one. Yes, as it turned out, this man had been driving for six decades or so without a license. Six decades in which 
He was never once pulled over for any reason. Never once got a speeding or parking ticket. Six decades of apparently safe driving that never once saw him come under the legal radar. The man had driven basically his whole life without a license and had never been caught. At least, until one officer spotted him not wearing his seatbelt. Number 3. On April 16th, someone tweeted a rather interesting picture that has since racked up nearly 2 million views. At a glance, it looks like a rather fancy and expensive steak just lying on the road, and that's what the tweeter thought as well, hence taking a picture. But upon closer inspection, well, it was something else. I thought some really nice meat had fallen on the road, but it turned out to be a towel. Quit confusing me like that. The tweeter reportedly approached the fancy and expensive looking meat, thinking he could simply pick it up and take it home to eat. In his own words, he grew up in the countryside, so this didn't especially bother him. But sadly, the red and white item on the ground wasn't high grade meat, but rather just a towel. Disappointing. Hard to deny that it does look delicious though. Number 4. A 31-year-old unemployed man from Hokkaido was arrested this month for attempted murder after stabbing a convenience store clerk in Asahikawa City. What made this story strange, however, was that the man was live-streaming as he did it. This is a robbery, he screamed to the staff member behind the register as he streamed before stabbing her. And why would he do such a thing? Why, to go viral, of course. The man decided to stab the convenience store worker simply because he wasn't getting the views he wanted. Even as he streamed it, he screamed at those watching, The comments have stopped. Come on, post more comments. Spread the video around. Post it on TikTok or something. Police soon swarmed the store and the man was arrested, but he was reportedly upset that his streams weren't getting many views, so he decided to do something to change that. That something being committing a crime, live on camera. This case is still under investigation. Number 5. In this month's capsule toy news, if you've ever wanted a somewhat unique snow dome, then never fear, Japan has you covered. You can now get the Kitty Litter Snow Dome that does exactly what it says. Available in a variety of kitty colours, such as black, white, tabby and calico, these snow domes show realism in a protective little covering as a cat digs through its litter that then goes everywhere. Just like the real thing. These adorable little snow domes are only 500 yen each, so make sure to collect all four. Number 6. In yet another convenience store crime, a man approached a 56-year-old staff member at a store in Saitama, brandishing a hammer. Give me your money. He said, You have money, right? Hand it over, quickly. Yet he got a rather surprising answer from the staff member that seemed to confuse him quite a bit. No, we don't, the staff member replied, claiming they had no money on the premises. This confused the robber to be so much that he apparently just left. Another staff member who was in the store at the time, a 54 year old woman, then pressed the emergency button to contact security, who then rang the police. The attempted robber, described as being 170 centimeters tall, of medium build, and wearing a grey sweatsuit and green mask, is still at large. Number 7. We're heading back to my hometown for this one. On March 8th, police in Izumo City, Shimane Prefecture, received a call from a car rental company. After checking one of the returned cars, we found something that looks like drugs inside. The company was reportedly tipped off by, well, the customers themselves. One of the men who rented the car, an unemployed 20-year-old, called the company after returning it and said, I left something in the car. I'm coming to get it, so do not look inside. Of course, the company did look inside and there they found a small aluminium bag. They then called the police who did testing and confirmed that the contents were cannabis. 
The two men were arrested on violation of the Cannabis Control Act with intention to profit from the sale of it. Number 8. An interesting debate was triggered this month when a teacher posted something one of their students had done on Twitter. There used to be scary stories of students using Wikipedia as a source, but now it's like, according to Mr. Tuckytooth. Who is that? Mr. Tuckytooth is a history YouTuber. You can't use that as a source. He has over 30,000 subscribers. Who are you to talk with only 300 followers? Ouch. The tweeter, who now has over 3,000 followers, thank you very much, started an interesting debate about the changing standards for sources in education. Not too long ago, it was considered a bad move to use something like Wikipedia as a source, but now people are trying to use random YouTube channels and claim that they can be authorities because they have tens of thousands of followers. Poor libraries. They get no love anymore. Number 9. I'm not gonna lie, this one's pretty gross. It was reported that in February of this year, a 50-year-old man from Nagoya was caught dumping 30 plastic bottles at his workplace. The problem? These plastic bottles were full of his own urine. These bottles amounted to roughly 23 kilos of urine all up, and when questioned on why he would do such a thing, the man reportedly replied that going to the communal bathroom was too much of a hassle. Instead, he just stored 23 kilos of urine in his room and then took it to work to dispose of. Of course. He now faces charges for violating Japan's waste disposal and public cleansing law. Also, it's just really gross. Number 10. Finally this month, Sanrio Puroland, an indoor theme park where you can meet all sorts of cute characters like Hello Kitty, is hosting a special event this June, something far more relevant to my interests. On June 10th and 17th, limited to 1,000 guests each day, they'll be holding the Obaken Nightmare Land event. Six different tribes, such as the Ghost Tribe, the Clown Tribe, the Devil Tribe, etc., will roam the park like a giant haunted house trying to attack you. You must escape the tribes and wake up from the terrifying nightmare. Guests will reportedly receive a sash that the various monster tribes will try to take away, and you must solve various puzzles throughout the event to try to escape. Tickets cost just shy of 6,000 yen and can be reserved online right now. And that's just some of the weird, bizarre, terrifying, and also kind of funny news that came out of Japan last month. Number 1. To start with some very serious news this month, it was reported that a 57-year-old man from Asahikawa City in Hokkaido was arrested on May 17 for, well, allowing his dog to poop in somebody's yard and then not cleaning it up. The man, who, as it turns out, is also a member of the Asahidokai, a Yakuza group in Hokkaido, reportedly let his dog do his business in a stranger's yard twice while out walking, once on December 28th and once on January 9th this year. While the act of pooping in somebody else's yard isn't itself a crime, by not cleaning it up, the man violated the Waste Management and Public Cleansing Law. He denies any knowledge of his dog doing the pooping, and police are still investigating. Number 2. May 5th is Children's Day in Japan, and this year, those in Yokohama City got to celebrate in a special way. They got to participate in a Junken tournament with none other than a giant moving Gundam itself. Because why not? The 18 meter high moving Gundam can be seen regularly at the Gundam factory in Yokohama, but it's certainly not every day you get to play rock, scissors, paper with it. Around 500 people took part in the event, and over four rounds with the giant robot, eight people emerged victorious. Now there's a story to tell your friends at school. The victors were then able to get up close to the robot and take photos most people otherwise wouldn't get the opportunity to, 
and also bragging rights for defeating a giant Gundam in battle. Number 3. The Tsuchinoko is an adorable little creature belonging to Japanese folklore that basically looks like a stout little snake. It's said they can talk, they love to lie, and they especially love a bit of hard drinking. While some of those aspects may be exaggerated by stories, there are still some who claim this creature does actually exist. It's just really, really hard to find. Well, on May 3rd, Higashi Shirakawa Village in Gifu held an event to find this beloved stout little guy. 2,500 people rocked up, which is impressive, considering only 2,000 people live in the village in the first place. And they set out to search the countryside for the snake-like creature. This wasn't purely for fun though. There's a cash prize on the line for anyone who actually finds the little dude, which raises each year. This year, the prize pool sat at an impressive 1,310,000 yen, although, as you may suspect, nobody has yet been able to claim it, despite many taking alcohol along with them to lure the creature out of hiding. And in hiding it remains for yet another year. Better luck next time. Number 4. You all know I love strange toys and gadgets, and this month, the company Thanko announced, well, let's just say an interesting type of fan. Summers in Japan get especially humid, damp, and uncomfortable. Air conditioning still isn't common outside of cities or new buildings, and it can be hard to stay both cool and dry. Well, never fear. Thanko has you covered. They have now released the fan you can stand on, and it does exactly that. It looks just like bathroom scales, but rather than making you sad when you step on them, this instead blows a cool breeze up your, well, legs and other attached body parts. Simply step on it, and away it blows. This gusty little gadget can be bought for just 12,800 yen right now. Number 5. On May 8th, an interesting tweet started doing the rounds thanks to the rather strange photo that was attached. Recently, a person wearing full body tights has been seen hanging around Ikebukuro. This person apparently enters the women's toilets and asks other women to take photos, but the person inside the tights is actually a man, not a woman. This same thing happened two years ago, and the man admitted it was his fetish and promised not to do it again, but he's still doing it, so please report him if you see him. Further information claimed the man was also appearing at cosplay events and entering the women's dressing rooms, so stay alert and report any suspicious people dressed fully in tights. And, the internet being the internet, people were quickly able to track down a likely suspect thanks to their phone case. The person in question has apparently been dressing like this for close to a decade now and started out specifically to get reactions out of people. Either way, cosplayers in the area are now on high alert. Number 6. When it comes to threatening people you're angry at, I dare say the first thing most people would not turn to would be paper cranes. But that's exactly what happened this month when a 22-year-old was arrested on May 11th for sending threatening letters to his former driving school. Alongside, approximately, 1,500 paper cranes. As it turns out, the man attended the school last year to get his truck driver's license, but in the end he failed to get it. Angry, the man started sending threatening letters to his former instructor, telling him to die, and hurry up and quit. He sent 16 different threats to the man by placing them directly in the school's letterbox, but he also dropped off a cardboard box full of the paper cranes. He was caught thanks to surveillance cameras, and when questioned said, I got angry at their poor teaching techniques. I made the paper cranes because they calmed me down. Indeed. Number 7. On January 30th this year, 
A worker at a garbage collection facility in Sapporo made quite the discovery. As he was sifting through the recyclables, separating the paper, he found the most precious paper of all. 10 million yen in banknotes. Japan has a law that gives a three-month period after the discovery of lost money to allow people to come forward and claim it. Naturally, they have to prove in a satisfactory way that the money is actually theirs, which is easier said than done. There were reportedly 16 claims to the money, but no one could actually describe what was found in a way that convinced officials they really had carelessly tossed 10 million yen out in the garbage. And so, on April 30th, the city itself took ownership of the money. Although, they haven't yet stated what they're actually going to do with it. And let it serve as a cautionary tale to always check your trash before you throw out millions in cash with it. Number 8. If you've ever wanted to be hit on the head by an idol with a hammer, well, you've sadly just missed your chance. In an event that was no doubt cathartic for many on both sides, members of the idol group Shiso Crayon held a human whack-a-mole game at the Tokyo Idol Festival Gakuen Spring School Festival on May 4th. This festival featured numerous idol groups and was held, much like the name suggests, as a school festival. Meaning it took place in an actual campus and the groups each came up with their own events to hold outside their live performances. The ladies of Shiso Crayon came up with a whack-a-mole event, where fans could pay for the privilege of being bonked on the head, over and over. Because who doesn't want that? Footage posted on the group's Twitter showed the ladies laughing and bonking away, with each idol focused on smacking one particular fan over and over. Because, hey, they paid for it. Memories of a lifetime, I'm sure. Number 9. It was reported that on May 27th, at roughly 8.25pm, a man entered an unmanned store in Sumiyoshi Ward, Osaka, and took 29 ice creams, 7 sirloin steaks, and 5 fillet steaks without paying. The cost of these products totaled roughly 23,000 yen. Quite a decent amount. Naturally, the owners of the store reported this to the police once they saw what happened on their security cameras, but they also came under fire for their public post about it. They posted a notice of the theft on Instagram, alongside the comment, Hey, fatty, was the stolen meat good? Presumably, the stolen meat was indeed good, but many felt that calling the man out on his weight, despite what he stole, was a little uncouth. Others, on the other hand, agreed with the store owner getting straight to the point. Either way, the image has now been shared thousands of times and police are still looking into the incident, so the man is unlikely to steal from the same store again anytime soon. Number 10. Finally this month, a junior high teacher from Nagoya was arrested while out on his rather interesting second job as, well, a host. It was reported that on February 11th, the part-time maths teacher, part-time host, approached a woman on the street and asked her if she wanted to go to a host bar with him. Unfortunately for him, the woman was a police officer, and while being a host itself isn't illegal, according to Aichi law, soliciting on the streets for customers is. More problems arose once people realised the man was also a teacher, as there is also a stipulation that teachers, even part-time ones, not take other jobs that would compromise their role as an educator. According to the Board of Education, the man was known as a rather diligent and hard-working teacher, and they had no idea he was working as a host on the side. The man reportedly wasn't doing this host work for money either, but just because he enjoyed it. Either way, he was fired from his teaching job, not for his side job as a host, but for the arrest. And they're going to look into adding more specific rules for what side jobs are acceptable in the future. 
Number one. If you're a big fan of the cyberpunk aesthetic and shrines like I am, you should enjoy this first piece of news. On May 31st, a Twitter user shared this picture that has since garnered quite a bit of attention. This cyber shrine in Kyushu is way too cool. You can see the lanterns lining the stairs lit up with red LED lights, blue lights for the kitsune masks and kanji, and the shrine also has the word dedication lit up with blue LEDs too. It's certainly visually striking, and many agreed with how awesome it looked. A reporter from JTown Net interviewed the original poster and discovered the shrine is Nakatsukasa Magatoro Shrine, and they then visited the shrine themselves to find out why it was lit up in such a bewitching manner. According to those managing the shrine, many such shrines like it are now dilapidated and empty, so they've started lighting shrines up in fantastic ways to enliven them once more. It's hard to say the idea didn't work. Number 2. This summer, enter another world in Namja Town. Are you a Siren fan? If you're on this channel, I'm going to assume you're at least familiar with the game, even if you don't like it very much. Well, this year is the 20th anniversary of its release, making me age several decades all at once again. But to celebrate, you can visit a horror attraction at Namja Town in Tokyo, celebrating the beloved game. And what can you find there? Well, lots of goods for one. It also has a siren restaurant with all sorts of meals based on things from the game, such as red damn water soup, or the mum, open up, hot dog. Because, of course. There's also a sort of haunted house walk along, and a mystery to be solved by finding various hints hidden around the area. If you manage to solve the riddle, you'll get a sweet siren prize. This event will start July 14th and finishes September 3rd. Number 3. In very serious news, it was reported last month that somebody in Sapporo had been hard at work in a string of 16 thefts across the city throughout the end of May. And what exactly were they stealing? The drain covers from public urinals. Because why wouldn't you want a collection of those to call your very own? A contractor hired to clean the toilets noticed that several had gone missing, and reportedly 37 have gone missing to date. The price of these drain covers only amounts to a few thousand yen each, but I think the more pressing question here is why anyone would want a pea-covered drain cover. The suspect remains at large, but they presumably have quite a unique, if not smelly, collection building in their house right now. Number 4. On June 27th, residents of Nago City in Okinawa noticed something quite horrifying. The water near the Orion beer factory had turned red. Had the apocalypse finally arrived, or was it something a little less sinister? According to officials from Orion, the terrifying sea of blood was actually just a food colouring leakage from their factory that found its way into the river from the rainwater drain. They quickly found the cause of the leak and plugged it, but they assured people that the food colouring has zero effect on the human body and should disappear soon enough. Until then, it'll look a little apocalyptic, but it's totally harmless. Number 5. In more bizarre thefts, it was reported that on March 10th this year, an employee from Osaki City Hall in Miyagi Prefecture went to the fridge to get her delicious Yakult drink, only to find it was gone. The entire pack. She did the only reasonable thing and reported the theft of her 10 pack of Yakult to the police. Police checked the security cameras and quickly found the culprit. A man was seen entering the building around 3.45pm. He then went to the fridge, took the Yakult, and left. What made this even more bizarre was that the man wasn't an employee at the city hall. So, why on earth would he enter just to take some Yakult from the staff fridge? Things got even weirder when police got a call on May 14th about the emergency stop button being pressed at a crossing in Osaki, despite there being no emergency. It was here they found the same man again, and finally arrested him for his bizarre behaviour. He admitted to stealing the drinks, but police are still investigating why. Number 6. Have you ever wondered which prefecture in Japan has the most disgusting food? Well, wonder no more. 
Ranky, a Japanese ranking website, held a vote to find out which prefecture people think has the worst food in the entire country. And the results were certainly interesting. Coming in at number three was Tokyo itself. You might think of Tokyo as having easy access to some of the most delicious food in the country, but apparently it lacks when it comes to local dishes. And people argued that you could find the food there literally anywhere, so there's nothing special about it. In second was Nagano, accused of having incredibly plain food, seasoning that's too salty, and poor seafood due to its location far from any water. Rough. But in first place was Okinawa. Due to its unique food culture that developed entirely differently to the mainland, many apparently find it peculiar and even unappetizing. As someone who's also not a big fan of Goya, I understand. Number 7. An 86-year-old man received a letter of appreciation from the Saitama police this month for an act of kindness that prevented a potentially horrific accident. At 5.40am on June 5th, the man looked outside his house and noticed something odd. What appeared to be a woman asleep on her knees on the road outside. The woman, in her 20s, was in a deep, drunk sleep. Fearing that she might get hit by a car, the man grabbed some traffic cones from his house and then placed them around the woman, taking care not to actually touch her in any way, and then guided cars safely around her while he waited for the police to pick her up. I couldn't just leave her there to be in an accident, he said, and the police were deeply appreciative of the actions he took that may have just saved her life. Number 8. It's that time of the month. Time for more poop news. On June 19th, a 39-year-old man from Obihiro City in Hokkaido was arrested for, well, covering someone's apartment door in feces. The unemployed man reportedly wiped his own excrement all over the door of a first-floor apartment in Obihiro on the night of March 9th this year. The man lived in the same building on a different floor, and when the resident of the defiled apartment got home and saw what happened, they notified police. Police were able to track the man down by extracting DNA from the mess left on the door, and then, three months after the incident, finally arrested him. The man has denied the poop smearing, and police are investigating the hows and whys of this rather smelly incident. Number 9. On June 13th, an unemployed man in his 20s was arrested in Iwata City, Shizuoka Prefecture, on suspicion of theft. And what did he steal? A bike, believed to be worth around 5,000 yen. But that wasn't what made this story interesting. It turned out the bike he stole had been reported missing in Gunma Prefecture, over 300 kilometers away. Yes, it turned out that the well-tanned man had stolen the bike from Gunma in May and, over the next month, ridden the bike over 300 kilometers before ending up in Shizuoka. The bike had apparently been lent to a foreign worker and was left in a bicycle parking lot when it was pilfered by the man and then taken on a very, very long journey. The man admitted to all charges. Number 10. Finally this month, a 30-year-old construction worker was arrested by police in Hyogo on suspicion of assaulting another man at a restaurant. The suspect reportedly punched a 29-year-old office worker in the face around 2.10am on June 10th, causing bruises and other injuries. The suspect admitted to punching the man three or four times in the face. Investigations revealed the men were total strangers who had never even seen each other before this night. So why were they fighting? Well, according to one of the men, our eyes met. Yes, that was the cause of the issue. Apparently the two men, merely customers at the same restaurant at the same time, looked at each other and decided it was time to punch each other in the face. He pulled on my clothes, so I got angry and hit him. He tried to hit me, so I pushed him in self-defense. This case is still ongoing. Number 1. 
On July 9th, an interesting creature was captured on film in a lotus root field in Ozu City, Ehime Prefecture. Look familiar? Yes, many have suggested that it's finally real footage of the long-fabled Tsuchinoko. But is that really what it is? Reporters visited the area after the footage went viral online to uncover the truth, but didn't find much more than locals who hadn't seen anything and couldn't offer any explanation either. They next went to zoo officials to find out what the creature could potentially be, seeing as the footage was the only thing that existed of it, and discovered that it sadly likely wasn't a Tsuchinoko, but rather an Asian water monitor. They do indeed look rather similar, and I'm not going to argue with a zoo official, so I guess the great search continues. Number 2. Have you ever woken up in the morning and felt so absolutely thoroughly exhausted that you'd love nothing more than an anime girl to step out of the shadows and slap you in the face? No? Just me? Well, at any rate, Japan has just released an energy drink that, um, promises to do just that. NN Drinks have released a 50ml energy drink called Mayushi's Slap, with the titular character coming from the Steins Gate franchise. And what does it taste like? Well, it claims to have a refreshing morning taste, which is apparently just fruit. It tastes like fruit. Getting slapped in the face by an anime girl tastes like fruit. Who knew? It packs a decent 120 milligrams of caffeine in a tiny bottle, so if you want to experience the slap for yourself, it's on sale now. Number three. This month, an exhibit very relevant to my interests was held in Tokyo, celebrating 50 years of occult history. The Urban Legend Exhibit, which is being held in the Kitasenju Marui building in Tokyo, marks the 50th anniversary of when many claim the occult boom really began in Japan, 1973. In the exhibit, you can trace 50 years of urban legend history throughout Japan, covering not just your traditional ghosts and monsters, but things like UFOs, cryptids, yokai, and even modern-day creepypastas like Hashaku-sama and Kisaragi Station. If you're in town and want to check it out, it's still running as of publishing this video, and tickets cost 1,400 yen, so don't miss out. Number 4. Japan is currently going through one of its hottest summers so far, so naturally, finding ways to stay cool is of the utmost importance. And what better way than ice cream, am I right? Well, on July 16th, a 56-year-old woman spotted a delivery truck unloading some supplies for a Genki food and drug store in Ama City, Aichi Prefecture, and decided to take matters into her own hands. Hot and cranky, she stole several ice creams straight from the truck. When the man unloading the goods noticed and tried to stop her, she turned around and bit him instead. He managed to restrain her until police arrived and she admitted to stealing the ice cream simply because she was hot. Indeed. Number 5. Yet another interesting exhibit was held in Tokyo this month. Not urban legends this time, but rather human flesh. Yes, you heard that right. The Human Flesh Art Exhibition has been held in various cities so far, with more on the way, even international. But it was held in Tokyo on July 25th and 26th. And well, you can see from the pictures what to expect. Pieces of incredibly realistic human flesh shaped into blocks, sporting items, phone cases, you name it, it's probably there and ready to freak you out. You may already recognise this artist's work from the Tomie pieces he made last year, but if you're interested, keep an eye out because this exhibit is travelling far and wide. Number 6. It feels like common sense to not imitate things you see in movies, TV or comics. But as they say, common sense isn't so common anymore, it seems. On July 3rd, it was announced that a 21-year-old man from Fujisawa City and a 22-year-old man from Chigasaki City, both Kanagawa Prefecture, were charged with violating the road traffic law. And what did they do? They were trying to drift like they had seen in Initial D, of course. Initial D ended 10 years ago now, but it's still influencing generation after generation of wannabe drifters who are a danger to themselves and others. 
Of course, when the men, in two different cars, attempted to drift, they weren't very successful and instead hit a guardrail instead. Many criticised the men for their stupidity in trying such actions in public spaces, even actual races. After all, if they can't follow road rules in public, who's to say they will on the track as well? Remember, what you see in manga should probably stay there. Number 7. A tweet went viral this month highlighting a rather interesting stream. Who are the 20 people watching the unmanned live camera at the Marunuma Kogen Ski Resort in the middle of summer? It said, including a link to said stream. As of releasing this video, the stream is still up. You can find a link in the description if you want to watch it for yourself. But as the tweet stated, and as the picture shows, well, the stream doesn't really show anything. The camera is set up in the restaurant of the ski resort that's empty, other than a lot of tables, chairs, and for some creepy reason, a stuffed bear and penguin. Because of course. And at any given time, it seems, there's at least a few dozen people sitting there watching that empty room and the stuffed bear in it. Every now and then the bear and penguin seem to move around, however, and if you watch it at night, you get a nice nightlight effect that makes it even more horrifying. Creepy, but very effective advertising to be sure. Number 8. Last month, we had an apocalyptic red river in Okinawa. This month, we have a pestilential green river in Ikoma City, Nara Prefecture. On July 5th, residents woke up to find the Tatsuta River had turned a horrifying shade of fluorescent green. Specialists set out right away to discover why the river was suddenly such an unnatural colour, and they traced it to a much smaller river upstream that was feeding it. On a concrete embankment nearby, they found a reddish-brown substance that, when washed off, turned neon green. The culprit turned out to be fluorescein sodium, a component often used in bath salts and such as a dye. It's also used in food colourings and as a visual aid in plumbing, but is supposed to be completely harmless to the human body. Police are still investigating where it came from and whether it was illegally dumped. Number 9. Japan has all sorts of interesting vending machines, but now you can be served your morning coffee while listening to the soothing tunes of Surfing USA by the Beach Boys. How else would you want to drink your coffee? These vending machines, found in Kujukuri City, Chiba Prefecture, a location you may remember from this channel as the location of the beach that disappeared from the maps, offer both hot and cold coffee, various flavours such as banana and caramel, and some interesting blends such as the after surf blend, the wipeout blend, and the rising sun blend. You can also watch your coffee being prepared on screen as you chill to the Beach Boys. Fantastic. Number 10. Finally this month, on July 10th, a monk shared a rather terrifying story on Twitter. This is a true scary story. When you visit the cemetery during summer, please go with at least two or more people. It would be best not to go alone. Of course, this sounds like the start of your average horror story, but when expanded, the monk went into more detail of why you shouldn't go alone. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, Japan is currently going through an incredibly hot summer, and the monk's advice not to go alone wasn't because of ghosts or supernatural creatures lurking in the dark corners of graveyards, but rather because of the heat. Cemeteries often have little shade, and because it's the elderly who are most likely to visit them, they are the most likely to suffer from heat stroke, even when doing something as simple as a little weeding around their ancestors' graves. As such, it's safer to go with other people to avoid potential avoidable catastrophe. A wise monk indeed. Number 1. On July 19th, a Twitter user shared a photo that quickly garnered quite a bit of attention. The photo, taken near a shrine in the mountains of Niigata, shows a collection of 
Well, stones with human-looking faces. The stones are of varying sizes and shapes, but they're all placed on a stone platform deep inside the forest, away from human eyes. What could they possibly be, and why are they there? Well, according to the user who took the photo, and some investigative digging, these human-faced stones, as they've come to be called, were actually the work of a single citizen. They have nothing to do with the nearby shrine, but rather, they were a kind of art project by a regular local resident. This resident apparently started this project back in the 1960s, after developing an interest in local history, and decided they wanted to make something interesting themselves. Said resident has since passed away, although before death, their goal was to apparently create 500 human-faced stones. They sadly never reached that goal, and no one has taken over since, so what we see now is likely how the art project will remain. Number 2. Have you ever wanted to take a nap in public while standing up? I mean, who hasn't? Well, never fear, a cafe in Harajuku has you covered. A hardwood company has released what they call the Giraffe Nap Sleeping Box, and the Nescafe Harajuku store unveiled it for the first time on August 22nd. This Giraffe Nap Box supports the human body in four different places – the head, butt, shins, and back of the legs. This allows you to fully relax yet remain standing. When taken in combination with a quick coffee beforehand, it's said to boost productivity and help sleep deprivation. You can rent one of these boxes for 30 minutes, and with a cup of coffee, will only put you back 825 yen. Truly, we are living in the future. Dystopian, no doubt, but the future nevertheless. Number 3. As far as sacrileges go, you probably don't want to upset Neo of all deities. Generally depicted as two wrathful and muscular guardians, their statues can be found standing entrance at many Buddhist temples around the country, and they symbolize life and death itself. Well, it was revealed that this May, someone visited Chokoji Temple in Shiga and, well, broke the arm off one of the Neo statues while stealing donation money. They also damaged a cultural heritage gate. Apparently, Bro woke up and wanted to max the bad comer speedrun as quickly as possible. Naturally, the chief priest was not amused when he woke up and discovered what had happened. Whoever did this needs to be thoroughly cooked by King Yama in Hell. Indeed. Parishioners were also upset that their local temple had been defaced during what appears to have been a robbery and police are still investigating the incident. Number 4. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. You know how the saying goes. It was reported last month that a 28-year-old man from Sendai was arrested in November 2021 for entering a hospital and stealing a register full of cash. He reportedly got away with roughly 30,000 yen, but a passerby saw him breaking in and alerted the police. The unemployed man remained silent when questioned, but was charged regardless. Well, it seems that same man has been back at it, although with a new method this time around. Because in April this year, he reportedly visited the home of a 60-year-old woman and claimed, My three-meter-long black snake has escaped. He asked to be led inside to look for the massive creature and, while there, reportedly took roughly three and a half million yen in cash and commemorative coins worth another 130,000 yen. The woman reported this to the police once she realized what happened, and they are currently investigating whether anyone else has been swindled with his massive snake story. Number 5. On August 22nd, the town of Fushimi in Saitama received a donation of 100,000 yen from someone claiming to be none other than Himejima Gyome from the anime Demon Slayer. It was accompanied by a note stating, Please use this to build a town where children can smile. It had been stuffed into an envelope box in the city hall. One of the characters used in Gyome's name was written incorrectly, but it's hard to fault the heart behind the anonymous donation. But interestingly, this isn't even the first donation the city has received like this. 
They reportedly also received donations of 100,000 yen in May this year, as well as February and October of last year as well. All donated anonymously under character names from Demon Slayer. The identity of the mysterious donator remains unknown, but the city said that, in according to their wishes, they have been putting the money towards various children's projects across the city. For once, some good news. Number 6. Now, on the other end of the nerd scale, police in Hyogo received a phone call from a 31-year-old man on the morning of August 5th. The man had a very important complaint. My figure is gone. The figure in question? A 4,000 yen figure of Sorda from Kingdom Hearts. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, theft is theft. The culprit turned out to be his 41-year-old girlfriend, and when questioned by police, she admitted she was the thief. Why did she take it? Well, according to her, she sold it for living expenses. It's unknown whether the couple are still together after this terrible betrayal. Number 7. I am, for better or worse, all about energy drinks, and I have a weakness for weird and interesting foods as well. And soon, Japan is releasing something that seems very much up my alley. Gamer noodles. Yes, you heard that right. Gamer noodles. Just look at them. While they sadly don't come steeped in energy drink, nor do they glow rainbow like the packaging might suggest, these cup noodles are designed around doing essentially the same thing as an energy drink, giving you a quick little boost of energy and concentration so you can get back to slaying noobs and talking smack about their mothers. There's the energy garlic and black pepper yakisoba, and the energy ginger kima curry. Both types of noodles come with bonus caffeine and other elements you'd typically find in a giant can of Monster or Rockstar, not noodles. Although I'm disappointed they don't come in glowing rainbow liquid, I'm still intrigued as to how they'll taste. Caffeine and instant noodles. Nothing can go wrong here, right? Number 8. This month, FBS shared a special report they did on a driving school that offered well, a drunk driving event. This is actually less weird than it seems. Kind of. The Chikushino Driving School in Fukuoka Prefecture held a rather unique event on August 21st that was designed to, well, knock the bravado and stupidity out of people, but also save lives. First, they had students perform a regular driving test. Then, they got them hammered on various spirits and put them behind the wheel again and had them perform that very same test. The results were clear as day. Students that passed the test with flying colours while sober then ended up slamming into traffic cones, walls and other obstacles while drunk well over the legal limit. For many who thought that being inebriated would be no bother to their driving skills, well, they were indeed taught a sobering lesson in the safety of a driving school course. Don't drink and drive, folks. Just don't. Number 9. Ever wanted to ride a train full of monsters? Of course you have. Who hasn't? Well, this month, the Keifuku Electric Railway Company brought back their beloved Yokai train, an event that hasn't been held for the last four years. The Yokai train is basically exactly how it sounds. Running from August 11th till August 15th, it's basically a moving haunted house, a train full of people dressed up like various Yokai. You can even dress up as a Yokai yourself and fully immerse yourself in the atmosphere. Various crying children might disagree, but to me, it certainly looks like an event not to be missed. Number 10. Of all the things I would never say to a police officer, I don't want this dog, is probably up there. But on July 25th this year, that's exactly what one man said before yeeting his poor Shiba Inu at an officer. According to police, a passerby found a dog with a collar wandering around the streets shortly after 5pm. They took the dog to a nearby pet salon, but the workers didn't recognise the dog, so instead they called the police. 
When police arrived, they recognized the Shiba Inu, who, it seems, had been previously abandoned, and went to return the owner to its 55-year-old owner. However, the man got angry when they tried to give the dog back and apparently threw it at them, saying, I don't want this dog. Neither the dog nor the officer were injured, and despite clearly throwing the dog at the police officer, the man is denying all charges of dog eating. Someone should yeet him instead, let's be real. Number 1. If you've ever looked at the Ring series and thought to yourself, man, I'd love to play this as a card game, well, Karokawa now has you covered. Recently, they announced a Sadako card game will be coming this December 21st. Designed for 3 to 6 players, with games averaging around 10 or so minutes each, you can grab this horrifying set for just 2,200 yen. Rules seem fairly simple. You play someone under Sadako's curse, and you have to find a way to not die within the next few days. The game was specifically designed to be easy to play so anyone can pick it up and play a round or two without needing to dedicate hours to it, and through the cards you can find hints and rumours to help you escape death. But if you collect too many curse cards, then look out, because Sadako will appear to take her prize. Keep an eye out for this one, it looks fun. Number 2. Have you ever wanted to spend the night in a creepy, abandoned school? Well, now you can. Last month, a Twitter user shared photos of their stay in an old school building that is no longer in use. For education, anyway. It has since been turned into a rather unique hotel, and booking a night gives you free reign of the former school grounds and buildings. And everything is pretty much like it once was, with the gym, school grounds, etc. there to allow you to relive your childhood or maybe hunt for some creepy ghosts. This is probably the safest way to explore an old abandoned school, and you don't have to worry about getting in trouble with the police either. The school in question is the old Itoyo Elementary School in Fukushima Prefecture, and you can stay the night for less than $100. Number 3. In some news that both warmed my heart and made me a little sad from nostalgia, it was reported that a visitor to the Tokyo Game Show this year, which took place from September 21st to 24th, took their 3DS and still managed to get numerous street passes. In fact, they saw over 10 a day. Not bad for a system that was discontinued several years ago. Of course, if you're going to run into gamers still playing a now discontinued portable system, the Tokyo Game Show is no doubt a great place to find them. Still, the tweet went viral with many surprised that people still carry their 3DSs around, and others chimed in with events they went to recently where they managed to get street passes as well. As someone who used to carry my 3DS around a lot in Japan, it makes me kind of sad those days are now mostly gone, but apparently not entirely forgotten. Number 4. It was reported this month that residents in Izumi City, Kagoshima Prefecture, noted a foul smell coming from a reservoir that was under construction. This smell was so bad that the government was forced to take note of complaints, and just as well they did, because it turned out the source of the horrifying odour was, well, over 400,000 bird corpses that died from bird influenza. It seems there was a bad breakout in the area last winter, and around 410,000 chickens were buried in a 5 metre deep hole, about 300 metres from where the reservoir was being dug up. The natural waste from these chickens then seeped into the ground and, when digging began, the smell was unleashed. In a rare move, the government agreed to the wishes of nearby residents and agreed to rebury the site once more. They're hoping to finish by next month and people are calling for new systems to be put in place, so something like this doesn't happen again. Number 5. Pasta made at Yokohama Prison So states a brand of pasta that is selling particularly well these days, and yes, it's literally as the pasta states on the bag. It's made by prisoners at the Yokohama Prison, and to date, they have apparently sold over 8,500 bags of the stuff. Those who have bought the pasta have described it as 
springy and delicious, and just like fresh pasta. The inmates have worked hard to perfect their craft, and those working at the prison also hope that it will assist them with finding work once out of prison as well, something many inmates have struggled with. Number 6. A while back we featured some news about a mandarin that was, well, rather horrifying and looked like a demonic Pac-Man. Well, they're at it again. This photo, shared by Nomaka Juen on September 19th, shows something horrifying lurking on one of their trees. No, it's not a demonic Pac-Man, just another burst mandarin that has started to rot. This horrifying appearance is particular to the Kampe mandarin, which sucks up more water than usual and has a thinner skin than other citrus of its kind. So when there is, for example, suddenly a little too much rain, well, it's not uncommon for them to burst and then start rotting. Leaving you to walk around an orchid full of demonic little balls that look like they're just waiting to curse you. Makes for good promo though. Number 7. If you've ever wanted to swing off into the giant abyss, once again, this month Japan has you covered. The Hakuba Iwatake Mountain Resort in Nagano Prefecture is currently building the largest swing in the country, with plans to open it to the public on October 6th. Dubbed the White Horse Giant Swing, you can find this massive swing in the Japanese Northern Alps at an altitude of 1,100 meters giving you a fantastic view of the cities down below, and probably a bit of a heart attack at the same time. This is also Japan's first winding swing, which will allow anyone, regardless of age or physical strength, to hoist themselves into oblivion. It stands at 10 meters high and will launch you another 6 meters forward. No word on how far you can launch yourself from it, but it's probably an answer best left unknown. Number 8. On September 20th, a 24-year-old man from Tokyo was arrested in Ishigaki City, Okinawa, under suspicion of theft and driving under the influence. It was claimed that he stole a scooter from a bicycle parking lot around 4am on September 8th, and when police arrested him, he was found to be four times over the legal limit as well. But that wasn't all. You see, he was also charged with storming into a convenience store shortly before stealing the scooter, but naked, where he then bought some underwear that he promptly put on in the store. After that, he walked over to the parking lot about 250 metres away and reportedly stole the scooter adorned only in said underwear. He then returned to the same convenience store, this time with pants and his newly acquired scooter, roughly 12 hours later and it was there that he was arrested. The man has denied all charges and apparently claims to have been too drunk to remember anything that happened during his mostly naked 12-hour scooter rampage across Okinawa. Number 9. We've all no doubt said something stupid at least once or twice, if not more, on social media, and this month someone shared an interesting tweet they saw that no doubt made at least a few people involved feel, well, rather uncomfortable. There's a creepy fat nerd sitting behind me. I can't do this. His breath stinks, and even though he's coughing, he's not wearing a mask. I really want to move somewhere else. This was rather embarrassingly followed by a reply that quickly shifted the tone of the tweet. I think you're talking about me. 3rd grade, class B, seat 27, right? I'm terribly sorry. Ah, that's right. Sorry, my bad. Both accounts have since been deleted after that terribly awkward encounter, but many have laughed not just at how these two classmates found each other, but the fact they both had anime characters as their profile pictures. Maybe they should have got to talking and found some common interest to smooth over the awkward meeting instead. Number 10. Finally this month, while it's not quite gamer noodles, it was revealed that Mr. Donuts will be celebrating their 30th anniversary in Japan by releasing 
cup noodles. Because when I think of Mr. Donuts, I definitely think of cup noodles. At any rate, Mr. Donuts in Japan has never sold just donuts, and a common item on their menu is the soba soup. Generally, you can only get this in store, but now you can get it in instant noodle packaging to take home and enjoy there as well with some of the ingredients inside even shaped like donuts to remind you what exactly it is that you're eating. At only 270 yen, it's hard to complain. You can grab Mr. Donuts Soba Soup Instant Cup Noodles from October 11th. Number 1. How this was even possible and how nobody noticed remains a mystery, but it was reported on September 29th that a 2.5 meter, 300 kilogram statue in Takaoka City, Toyama Prefecture, was, well, stolen from a park. The statue was of Princess Momiji, a character from local folklore that was donated to the city in 2002 by copperware company Takenaka. The city received a call on September 29th noting that the statue was missing, and after some investigating, a local landscaper reported that they saw it on the 25th. So, it's believed to have gone missing sometime during these four days. The statue was bolted to its stand, but they found the bolts broken and numerous snapped branches on trees surrounding the area, so it's believed heavy machinery was brought in to remove it. The question remains, however, of why someone would want to steal a 300 kilogram statue, and how nobody saw this happen. The statue's current whereabouts are unknown. Number 2. A new horror film called Oksu Station, a joint production between South Korea and Japan, recently came out, but it also made the news for some rather interesting complaints it received. Although based on a popular South Korean webtoon, the film took heavy inspirations from Japanese horror films like Ring, and was filmed to somewhat mimic that particular horror style. But the director recently revealed that the production company was flooded with complaints during filming, because, it seemed, people were upset they were using a real station, not just for the film setting, but in the name itself. Oksu Station is a real station in the heart of Seoul, and people feared that using it in a horror film would give the area a bad rep. Yet the movie proved to be quite a hit on social media in particular, and numerous people posted about how they wanted to visit the station after seeing the movie, causing a somewhat mini-tourism boom. Ironically, complaints seemed to stop after that. Number 3. It was reported last month that a 38-year-old man from Chiyoda Ward, Tokyo, was arrested for stalking. That alone is hardly news, but what made people raise their eyebrows was that this man was arrested for stalking in a video game. Final Fantasy XIV, to be exact. From March 20th to May 16th this year, the man reportedly sent numerous messages over social media to a 28-year-old woman he knew in-game, demanding that she talk to him, and if she didn't, he would inform her family of their previous conversations. She blocked him, but then he continued to follow her character around in-game, spamming her with messages such as, Don't ignore me. She eventually got so fed up she went to the police, and the man was arrested on October 17th for violating the stalker control law. He has thus far simply denied that he had any romantic feelings for the woman. Number 4. Have you ever wished you could skip out on school and send a robot in your absence instead? Well, if you live in Kumamoto, your chance has finally come. This unique program has come about not to allow kids to skip out on school and do whatever they want, but rather to help children who are unable to go to school for a variety of reasons. Social anxiety, bullying, or even sickness. The robots are equipped with cameras, speakers, and microphones, and can be piloted from the comfort of one's home. It allows for two-way communication and can help ensure that students don't fall behind simply because they can't physically be in the classroom. It might not eradicate problems such as bullying and truancy, but the city is hoping it will, at the very least, improve matters and be the first step in tackling the problem for good. Number 5. 
I don't know about you, but there are times when I'm eating some soba noodles and then it hits me. There's something missing. These noodles aren't complete. You know what they need? That's right. They need the news printed on them. Well, no, I can honestly say I've never had that thought a single time in my life, but either way, Japan now has us covered. Nagano is now selling the Soba newspaper, with text printed right on the Soba noodles themselves. Of course, with packaging and selling, it's a little difficult to sell noodles with up-to-date news on them, so instead, they're filled with little tidbits and news from around Nagano itself. There are 50 different tidbits you can get, and not every single noodle comes with something printed on it, so you might have to buy numerous packs to collect and eat them all. You'll also have to do your reading before eating, because cooking them makes the text disappear. Number 6. Five train passengers in Hokkaido recently found themselves in quite the pickle when they found themselves stranded on board for seven hours overnight without heating. No, it wasn't because the train itself suddenly stopped working, but rather something far more horrifying. It turned out that the train had hit a bear. At around 11.25pm on October 30th, a train on the Hokkaido Nemuro line apparently hit something quite large between Nokanan and Furano stations. This was a small one-car train, and when they looked outside to see what they had collided with, they saw a large bear. Unable to confirm whether the animal was alive or not, those on board could do nothing but wait until authorities showed up, which, unfortunately for them, wasn't until seven hours later. The bear was confirmed dead, and passengers were then able to finally return home by taxi. Number 7. It seemed somebody in Kasukabe City, Saitama Prefecture, was getting up to a little mischief last month, as people around town noticed something a little odd. The concrete coverings over gutters had been lifted and left open seemingly at random around the city. What on earth was going on? There were reportedly 30 sidings to date of gutter coverings being lifted and then left open, and being that these are areas where pedestrians walk, it's obviously quite dangerous. After investigating each of the sites, however, people soon realised they all had one thing in common. The coverings were all open in front of vending machines. No culprit has been found, and the city is still not sure why this is happening, but taking the vending machines into consideration, they think somebody might be after fallen money near them. It's quite dangerous to leave the coverings open, however, especially at night, so they've requested the perpetrator stop and have warned them that, if found, they can be arrested for violating the Road Act. Number 8. In this month's news designed to make me feel old, Gutta K is back, baby. Well, kind of. These old flip phones that were all the rage in Japan before smartphones stepped in and took over are almost non-existent these days. But the nostalgia remains, and P Up World, a Tokyo company, is now releasing a smartphone designed to look just like those old Gutake flip phones. The top half of the phone functions like a regular touchscreen, while the bottom resembles the old button-type phones of old. Because anyone could open and use old flip phones, this one comes with fingerprint recognition, so that it can't be used by just anyone even if they do open it. But, just like old phones, it also comes with a strap holder, and a clock you can read on the outside without opening the phone. It runs on the Android 13 operating system and thus far comes in two colours, black or white. It's on sale for all your nostalgic needs now. Number 9. I'm a big Fist of the North Star fan, but I never knew until now that I needed a life-size Jaggy helmet. And now, for the small, small price of 220,000 yen, a decent month's pay, I can have one. A metal parts manufacturer in Hiroshima has now reproduced Jaggy's helmet in real life to celebrate the manga's 40th anniversary. It's a one-to-one -one scale and weighs 9 kilograms, so you'll want a strong neck if you plan on wearing it. 
but it was meticulously designed from start to finish to resemble the helmet from the manga as closely as possible. If you can't afford the hefty price tag, however, you could reportedly at least try it on at the Fist of the North Star exhibition that was held in Tokyo last month. Number 10. Finally this month, a 28-year-old woman in Hamamatsu City, Shizuoka Prefecture, arrived home after a long day of work to find every person's dream. Somebody had done her laundry for her and hung it out to dry. Wait, no what? She apparently entered her apartment on October 30th after returning from work to find, in particular, underwear she didn't recall washing, now hanging up to dry. Naturally, she called the police, and after some investigating, they arrested a 50-year-old man who lived in the same building. The woman had reportedly forgotten to lock her door after leaving for work that day, and the man decided to let himself in and do her washing for her. He admitted to the charges, but police are still investigating why, exactly, he felt such a strong desire to do the laundry. A true mystery indeed. Number 1. A public bathhouse in Tokyo came under fire this month for, well, turning their baths into tonkotsu soup. Yes, you heard that right. Kosugiyu posted a tweet on November 28th that has since been deleted, announcing that they would be holding an event on the 28th and 29th where they would be turning the public baths into ramen baths. They would be doing this by adding tonkotsu soup ingredients so bathers could enjoy the gentle aroma as they bathe. Naturally, people had many questions, with perhaps the most important being, wait what? They're adding tonkotsu ingredients to baths? While a few people were apparently excited for the chance to bathe in soup, others were naturally upset at how unhygienic this all sounded, and it didn't take long for the public baths to walk the event back, delete the tweet, and apologise for those who were excited about the event, but maintaining hygiene is of the utmost importance to them, and they detailed how they had spent the previous night cleaning the baths, and even pipes, of all traces of tonkotsu. Indeed. Number 2. Around 6.30pm on November 20th, someone walking around Takaki Nishimachi in Hyogo called police to inform them that Someone is walking around spreading white powder. They look like a foreigner. Police and firefighters in protective clothing immediately set out to discover what this potentially dangerous powder might be, and for the next two hours, an area spanning over 100 metres was blocked off as they investigated. Police were unable to find the mysterious powder spreader, but they were able to find the powder itself. Was someone truly spreading drugs or perhaps something explosive? Tests confirmed with 98% certainty that the mysterious white substance was flour. Plain old wheat flour. Why somebody was spreading flour throughout town remains unknown and the suspect was never found. Number 3. We spoke just recently of a man who was arrested for stalking a woman online in a video game. Well, it was reported this month that a 42-year-old man from Tokyo was also arrested in August for assaulting a junior high boy he met in a video game. The pair apparently met in an online game in November last year, but when the boy made a mistake in-game, the man started harassing him. He sent him messages such as, how are you going to make up for it? And pressured him into sending indecent videos of himself. He then threatened to publicly post the videos and asked the boy to visit his house where he then assaulted him. The man has denied the charges. Number 4. If language disappeared from the world, how would you order something? A cafe in Harajuku with that very same premise opened this November, and, once you step inside its doors, you're no longer allowed to speak. Called, fittingly, a cafe without words, you're forbidden to speak once inside and must order using gestures. Not even the employees may speak, so it's truly a cafe of silence. What makes this cafe interesting, however, is that 
you can't just point to a picture on a menu to order something. The menu is available outside the store, and all drinks cost exactly the same, 800 yen. But once you're inside, you must convey merely through gestures which drink it is that you want. Only gestures. No photos or other aids are allowed. It was a unique concept that the organisers hoped would get people thinking, and while it ran for just a few short days, it appears people did get creative in their attempts to describe drinks with only gestures. Number 5. A Twitter user shared an interesting photo on November 26th of some money they had withdrawn from the bank. This is what I got when I took out some money from the bank. Give me a break. As you can see, various sentences were printed, not written, on top of the 1,000 yen notes. But it was the contents of those sentences that had people talking. There appeared to be two main sentences written on the notes. Please store food until 2024. And those who have received the corona vaccine, please refrain from eating for three days. The vaccine poison must be detoxified. Commenters were both horrified and somewhat impressed with how the text was printed on the notes, and others shared similar notes they had found, indicating this seemed to be a somewhat wider problem than first thought. Who did this, and why, still remains unknown. Number 6. Are you the type of person who has trouble making decisions, and sometimes you just wish someone else would do it for you? Or would you perhaps like to cosplay Two-Face for a bit? Either way, Japan has you covered, and in this month's capsule toys I wish I had, you can now get the Unmei no Coin, or Coin of Fate slash Destiny. Just like it sounds, you can flip a coin and have it decide your fate for you, and there's a different type of coin for various situations, so you best collect them all. Can't decide whether to sleep in more or get up? Let the coin decide. Do it now, or do it tomorrow. Let the coin decide. Rice or bread for lunch. Let the coin decide. There are eight types to collect, and they only cost 300 yen each. 300 yen to decide your fate. Not bad. Number seven. In this month's interesting technology, a company by the name of Thanko has released some new earphones, but these ones aren't for listening to music. When you think of earphones, well, what else could they be for, really? If I can't listen to music with them, what good are they? Well, Thanko is about to rock your world. These earphones are for warming your ears. There are no actual speakers in these earphones, nor are they the type of headphones that might cover your ears. They're earbuds that go in, and then they heat up. While that might feel alarming to some, they're supposed to help you relax, de-stress, and sleep easier. They come with three levels of warmth, and also a timer so they automatically turn off after a while, and you don't wake up with a burning sensation in your ears. You can nab yourself some of these relaxing, ear-warming earphones for just shy of 5,000 yen right now. Number 8. In news I never knew I needed to hear until now, a competition was held in Iwata City, Shizuoka Prefecture, on November 19th to see who could hold the most cabbages for two minutes straight without dropping any or falling down. This is exactly the content I need in my life. The winner was a woman who managed to hold 25 cabbages and was described by those who witnessed it as staring up at the sky her bent-over body becoming one with the cabbage. Indeed. The woman herself described the feat as no big deal, although her shoulders did feel a little heavy. And most importantly, when asked what she was going to eat for dinner that night after such a Herculean task, she said, Yakisoba. The dinner of champions. But even better, she was allowed to take all 25 cabbages home with her, that's going to make for a lot of yakisoba. Number 9. These days it feels like Sadako is never out of the news, 
whether it's some new product she's releasing or another appearance she's making somewhere. But this month's news is a little different. This month, she made the news for people realising they had been messing up the lyrics of the Ring theme song for several decades now. For the unaware, the theme song for the 1998 Ring film is Feels Like Heaven. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, but this month it went viral when a freelance writer realised that the lyrics he thought he'd been hearing all these years weren't actually what he thought, even though they still made perfect sense. The song starts with what many assume to be kuru, kito kuru. In the context of the film, that would amount to something along the lines of she's coming, she's surely coming, referring to Sadako, of course. But those aren't the actual lyrics. For decades, people have apparently been hearing kuru, when instead it's just simply ooh, kito kuru. Not a big difference in the grand scheme of things, but still amusing to realise you've been singing a song wrong for decades now. Number 10. And on a similar note, finally this month, Capcom, the creators of my favourite video game series Resident Evil, decided to use this month's Day to Say Difficult Things to Say to put the record straight on a famous quote from the very first game. Perhaps one of the most recognisable quotes in horror gaming. Of course, I'm talking about Itchy Tasty. Naturally, the quote in the original Japanese version of the game is also in Japanese, and that quote is, quite literally, Kayui Uma. Itchy, tasty, with the final E sound being dropped from tasty, umai, to signify the diary writer slowly losing his mind and humanity as he turns into a zombie. But for some reason, over the years, the quote has mostly been shared as Kayu Uma and not Kayui Uma, dropping the E sound from both words. Well, Capcom wants you to know that it's actually Kayui, not Kayu, and it has always been that way, despite people seemingly remembering it differently. Say it with me again, Kayui Uma, itchy tasty. And that's just some of the weird, bizarre, terrifying and also kind of funny news that came out of Japan last month. But what about you guys? Hear of anything odd or terrifying? Weird or funny? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.